All right, I'm gonna start this lesson by saying arguably the most important thing you might ever grasp about composition. Composition is the arrangement and or manipulation of space. And that's it. But okay, then what exactly do I mean by manipulation of space? Well, essentially, composition is all about the placement of positive and negative space. Now, you may have probably already heard of that before, which you most likely have, but this, I believe, is foundational to composition. These are the building blocks of composition, so to speak. Positive space refers to either the subject, the object, or general area of interest. It's typically the area of the image that you want the viewer to focus on. Negative space, on the other hand, is everything else in the frame. It's the background, it's the foreground, the props that you add in, and generally the areas surrounding the subject or area of interest. Let's take a look at a simple example. What do you think is the positive space? And which do you think is the negative space? The positive space is the object staring right at us. It's the donut shape, the block, as well as the teapot. And the negative space is all this dark teal space around it. It's the background as, well, some foreground as well. How about this example? What do you think is the positive space? I would say it's the teapot this time. And the negative space is still the dark teal background, but it also now includes the donut shape and the block, which was our positive space in the previous example. Now you're probably like, why though? Well, it's because the teapot is where my eye is drawn to. It's now the main area or object of interest, and everything else seems secondary. I would even say that this donut shape and block are now a part of the framing for the teapot instead of part of the subject itself. I hope that makes sense. Okay, what about this example? This one might be a little bit trickier. I would say that the entire table with the objects on it is the positive space, while the chair, the floor, and the background make up the negative space. I know that might sound a little bit confusing. Now, you could say that the watch only is the positive space and the rest is negative space. But I think that a lot of the table was left in the frame for a reason. It's to show us that the table as a whole, including all of the elements on top of it, is the subject or area of interest. It's telling a story, rather than just showing us, you know, a watch. Now, if I wanted to make the watch more obvious as the positive space, I would simply zoom in into the watch, making the positive space a bit more obvious by, well, taking up more room in the frame. By manipulating the placement of positive and negative space, you can convey a variety of different messages or let's just call them feelings in the viewer. Now, there are two more terms that can describe this and I would argue are just as important, if not more, than positive and negative space. So let's say you want to create a feeling of rest, a static image, or a feeling of stability. Then you might use what's called passive space. Passive space is all about creating a sense of balance and harmony within the image. Here's an example of passive space. One major thing to note about this composition is that it is almost perfectly symmetrical. So my eye pretty much just sits and rests right here in the center. Now, elements do not need to be completely symmetrical to be considered passive space. Remember, it's all about where the composition is leading your eye. If it's at rest and static, it's passive space. Consider this next example. Everything here apart from the platform is not symmetrical, but the focal point is somewhere around here, centered up vertically. And the image is not leading my eye anywhere else. It's right here. It's at rest. On the other hand, if you want to create a feeling of tension and movement and interest, you might use what's called active space. Active space is all about creating asymmetry, tension, and movement within the image. It generally creates more interest and tends to hold your attention longer. Consider this example. I moved the teapot way down to this corner with one of the cylinder blocks positioned pretty much in a way that the focal point or where the image is directing your eye is all the way over here now. There's a lot of negative space and a tiny amount of positive space. But do you see how by me changing how much positive and negative space there is and where I position them, it creates a different 
feeling than the last few examples. It feels like this huge circular block is about to crush this teapot or something like it. It feels like something is about to happen. That's the point here. It no longer feels like it's in a state of rest. Therefore, I would call this active space. Here's another example of active space. It's a simple composition, but notice how the composition is leading your eye. The focal point is perhaps right here, which is fine. This happens to be the main subject. But one way we can interpret this movement is starting from this teapot, curving down to the main teapot, and then this curve from the platform is leading our eye to exit the frame right here. So our eye sort of follows this S-shape pattern in a pleasing way, and because we sensed this movement by how the positive and negative space is positioned, this can be considered active space. Just to recap, we talked about positive space and negative space, and how manipulating those two spaces can result in either a passive space or an active space, and ultimately it all depends on how you want your viewers to feel, what you want your viewers to see, and ultimately what you want to say to them.